Well, g'day guys, and welcome to episode 10 of Mark Fishing Adventures. Well, with this uh, coronavirus going on, I decided to come down and do a bit of uh, food gathering. Uh, I've been isolated for about six weeks now. Um, as you can see, I've had a bit of shoulder reconstruction, so mate, I've been bored absolutely bat something crazy, stuck at home. So, uh, meeting a uh, guy by the name of Damien Tran. Uh, local prawning and squidding legend when it comes to the Brisbane area. So I just arrived down Combsley. As you can see, got the beast down there. Boat. Uh, we may be doing a bit of uh, prawning off Combsley itself. But what he's saying, we're going to hop in our boat and disappear somewhere up or down the river to do a majority of our prawning. Right, we've got Damien for his uh, first cast of the night. There you go, guys. See what he can produce. So, mate, tell us a bit about your burley as well. So, I, I, my, my burley is just homemade. This is something that I've just, you know, like, made up overnight. And it's made up of uh, breadcrumb and, you know, just your whatever that, that you can get. I tried it out with uh, fish fish sauce and tuna oil and all that, you know, it all work. Yep, what's it but, called? Hey, Damo's Burley Mix. Damo's Burley Mix. Yeah, so you know, I throw them out and as you can see, they they, 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 they tend to like it. And yep. It, it, it helps me with my prawning and it's just, uh, you know, it, it produces more yeah. in less time, in the in the least amount of time. So if you feed them, they'll come into that general area and uh, it's easy for you to, you know, to do a couple casts and you pretty much uh, catch them whatever prawns that's in that area. Yeah, yeah. But if, uh, you don't put the, uh, if you don't put the belly mix out, it's uh, you can still catch them, but uh, you know they're pretty much scattered. So, like you're saying earlier, you got to feed them. Everything eats. Yep, everything got to eat, mate. It's just like a uh, fish, birds, and all that, and us. Yep. If they eat, you throw food at them. They'll, you know, eventually they'll they'll come. It's like catching birds, right? Exactly like catching birds. Yep. Okay. Hang well up there. That's right. You didn't get any, bro, at all. So yeah, that's the belly mix that we use there. Yep. That's what, that's what I use. That's the most belly mix. That's my end product. So yeah, it's just your bread crumb. Like making it. Yep. <laughs> like making a cake. So it's spawn. Yeah. yeah, nice. Good size tonight, hey? Pretty yeah. good size tonight. Coming in. As it's coming in. Second cast of the night. Bit of heaven stuck in there, it's alright. So what got you into uh, teaching people? Uh, I was prawning down at uh, the Combsy at the uh, at the fishing jetty there, and I was just casting for bait like this, and I did it pretty much every time I go. And there was a lot of people there that was uh, cast netting, and they're having trouble and all that. Yep. And they were seeing me cast netting and getting perfect circles, and they're saying, "Hey, excuse me, can you can you can you you know show us how you cast a cast how 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 you cast that cast net?" And I just started from there. It's just uh, it just came along. You could say kids came along and it's just uh, 
it, it was something that I enjoyed as all, you know what I mean? And I was helping people, I was helping members and helping the public and I was seeing smiles and and, 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 uh, and happy faces, so that's, that's that's what got me into it, mate. Yeah. It's all about helping people. Yep. And I, I guess when that that's when your one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, casting class has evolved. Yeah, like yeah. Anyone can cut, anyone can learn off a, a, a video at the end of the day, but one on one is you. It's about far more valuable. You can uh, teach people where they go wrong, which is really good to see. That's right. Yeah, like you know, a lot of people think it's just a cast net where you pick up a cast net and it's just throw it out there. Yep. Uh, cast nets come in different sizes, you see, and they come in different styles. Yep. And uh, everyone's made differently. So you know, it's like you know, you, if you're a small guy, you drive a small car. Yep. Or you know, for that instant, or a big guy drive a bigger car. Yeah. So um, if you're a small fellow trying to fly a 12 foot casting and saying, oh, I can't get out, I can't get out, mm. you know, it's, it's, that's because you're going wrong. And probably the style as well. Some people have big arms, some people have small arms, some people got strong backs, some people have back, back problems. Yep. Uh, shoulder problems, elbow problems. So, you know, there's, there's what I teach, there's, there's four different ways that I teach that I, that I throw. And it's just, yeah, so I, I just teach that and they go through all four of that, those styles and methods. And um, if it works for them, then I'll just fix it from there. It's pretty, pretty simple. If you've got a teacher that, that can see what you're doing wrong, it makes your cast netting pretty much more easier. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Because they can point out. What are you doing, James? Look at this. <laughs> hey, you've got over a dozen, you're getting ones. <laughs> What's going on, mate? <laughs> Real donkeys in that. You won't until later, bro, when the tide slows down a bit more. Donkeys. Nice. Yeah. That's it. That fuck in the shells. That so one, that one there's late. That one there's late. This one here is peeled before him. So that one there peeled. That one there way peeled way before this one. You can feel the difference. Yeah. So what about the coloration? The coloration. This is because this is because it's it's, it's uh it's what you call it. It's molted earlier. Oh okay. These feel that one. The white one. Feel that one. They're softer. See that one molted pretty much right after the full moon. Yep. This one was the earlier one. He's molted oh, earlier. Yeah. He's molted way before that. There's yeah, a phrase, yeah, yeah. yes. Some some of them are, you know, they're, they're molt early and some some them molt late. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so that's so, coloration difference. Yeah. Yeah, nice. I've always wondered that. Why there's <laughs> different colours in the in the banana prawns? Yeah, well, the the the, the, the Bism River prawns they they tend to be a bit more darker as well than the bay prawns. The bay prawns you find them more, a bit more wider, hey, a bit more yep. cleaner. It's just pretty much the area they live as well, too, hey. Oh, okay. Right, I guess. Yep. But um, but you can tell by feeling their uh, their skin, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Jumping, jumping there. Okay, we see them flick. Yep. They They're come. jumping everywhere. Here they come. We see them flick. Yep. And, and <laughs> there's more coming here. Look, more coming. Because the, the the net's big. Yep. I'll use the ten footer later. It's a bit shorter. It's a bit uh, shallower. Yep. So if you're in the shallow water, use a smaller net. So if you want, if you're going to catch all that prawn there in one go, you get that bird, you cast it, you keep feeding them, keep feeding them, and they keep coming and keep coming. It's like birds, you know, you leave them alone, you leave them alone. Yep. One cast, mate, and you can get like that in one go. Ah, yep. Because I like to, you know. Don't, keep, pepper, don't pepper the area. Yep, just leave them alone, just keep feeding them, keep feeding them, and then, then as, the, as that stream, as that uh, current's moving, you get more prawns and more prawns sitting in that area because there's food. Yep. And so if you leave them alone, you, get, you, can, you can get that in like one cast easily. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, look, I'll be honest, it wasn't like not, wasn't known to me up until you started posting uh, your videos on the burley that, yeah. you know, you could actually burley prawns up. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. think I think most people would have been in that boat too. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a strategy, you know, it's, it's yeah. a, I've, I've, because I... Uh, I and I'll, look, it works. Yeah. It's proven. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Yep. That's, that's what, in five cars? Yep. Nice. Five. Five cars and I've got a good what two kilos there? Yeah, no, one half kilo, sorry. Yeah. yeah. And that's ah, all of them. 
more coming. Still yep. the bottom bro. That looks sick. Still coming more bro, this is the bottom bro. Here they yep. go. Tell you what, like beforehand, before you chuck that burl in, yeah, you're literally get nothing. As soon as you chuck that burl in, let it sit. There goes the evidence right there. Burly works. There's two sides that we did, mate. My mate, uh, Kurt's mate, who um, cast it over here. I didn't put any burly whatsoever, and he wasn't getting nothing at all. I was just doing it over there. Now he stopped over here. I put my burly here, and here we go again. Yep. So wherever I go, these prawns follow me because I'm feeding them. Yep. I don't want to hear that rod go off, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Make things a bit more exciting. You're not keeping these either. Nah, See, they're still here, eh? A few are here. Only a few. The smaller ones coming out now. See the smaller ones coming to play? Yep. The side tide, you get the bigger ones coming in. As the tides go out, the smaller ones come out to play, and it's going to pretty much game over. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's how you read when to leave. Yep. And not, not stand there for another hour or two wasting your time. Yep. So we get a, once you start seeing prawns like, like those little ones, you've got another half an hour or something in of uh, pulling left and oh, yep. game over. Yeah. Alright guys, there you have it. How to cast out lamb-based prawns. It's that easy. But what made it really simple was Damo's Burley Mix. Now, to get onto this Burley Mix, a lot of the tackle stores like Mr. Bait, uh, Water Tower Bait and Tackle, places like that, the little local guys, they do stock it. But uh, if you can't get it from them, get onto Damo's Casting Lessons on Facebook page. Now, uh, this is his own, and he will sell it from there as well. Right, Damo, explain what you're doing here, mate. I'm just butterflying the prawns just down the head there. I like to keep the, the uh, prawn heads on because I, I like eating the, uh, the mustards in the, in the prawns. Yep. So I'm just butterflying from the tip of their head, not just on the uh, the top side. Yep. Just from, the, the, just from where the horn is, down to the back, down to the tail, and that splits in two. Okay. Gives you access to the... Uh, poo vein. To the poo vein. Get a bit of the poo vein. How easy that's to get out. I'll keep that mustard on. That's the actual flavouring. Yep. Okay. Never tried it, so looking forward to it. Yeah, that's the actual flavouring. So I'll just keep them down like that. Just keep them so it keeps holds its shape. But I'm yep. just gonna go through all these ones, all the big ones, and I'm just gonna butterfly them. With the smaller ones, you don't really, you don't really need to. If you don't like the, if you don't like the heads, you must take take them off. All right. <coughs> Show it down the middle. <coughs> so you don't like the head. Okay. Same process. Break it out. There's a poo vein right there. Get rid of that. Yeah, this is nice, nice butterfly prawns ready for your barbecue. Okay. Can't get much fresher. Yeah. So we've got the prawns all butterflied already. I'm just gonna put a bit of butter on there. Okay. 
see the butterflies upside down. Lots of butter keeps it moist, mate. Yeah, it keeps it nice and moist so it doesn't get too dry. And plus, the butter gives it a bit of that nice uh, buttery, salty taste. Cool. Sprinkle some magic on there. That's some, uh, some of my special Asian. Mix. So, this is uh, homemade? Yeah, no, you can buy it from the shop, from the oh, Asian yeah. shop. Alright, so it's just a prawn, uh, chilli, garlic, uh, so mix, salt when, mix. When we're talking chilli, how much, how... I would say, uh, stinger? Oh, it's almost like Nando's. Oh, nice. It's almost like Nando's. Nando's, uh, it's, almost, it's almost like peri-peri. Yep. Yeah, very similar to peri-peri. Mm, a little bit of string wine there, a little bit of flavouring. So do you uh, cook the prawns the same length as you would uh, normally as soon as they get that red colour and yeah, yeah. Use that, lose that, um, that, that powder? Yeah, that's yep. right. Yep. So just one of them off and... Uh, fucking golden, that's a bit, that's a bit black there, but... You want them a bit like that? Yep. A bit golden. I mean, don't don't need to uh, be rich to enjoy life, do you? No, no, no. It's very simple. Not yep. simple. So it is. Those rich people don't don't uh, don't experience stuff like this because they're too fancy for it. <laughs> so what's next, Steffi? Demo. All right, what I'm gonna do is a bit of that. Put back with some more of that uh, more? flavoring. Yeah. This, yep. this is my uh, my dipping sauce. Okay. Not much. You can put as many as you want. It's almost like peri peri, yeah? So you can up to you. A bit of lime. Now, Kurt, press the camera, mate. I want you to test it. Let me do a third test, test, eh? Yeah. Is that rolling? Yeah, mate. That's rolling. All right, Kurt. Well, guys, I've um, never, ever eaten a prawn with uh, basically the mustard in here. So I'm actually going <laughs> to do this part first, see how she goes. Touch the mustard roll as it is. That is gorgeous. Yeah? You changed me, mate. What do you reckon the mustard? Oh. It's got a bit of that, that, that punch, isn't it? That's beautiful. It punches yet, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Robbie. Get into it, mate. Well. Now, try that dip. You gotta try it with that, with that dip now. Okay. Oh wow! Yeah, you see that? That just hit you right, right oh, in the face, wow. didn't it? That is beautiful. Powerful way. That oh. that sauce. That uh. Yeah. No. That's yeah, not it's bad. So, so good, you can actually eat it with the shell on, yeah. Yeah, man. That's what I'm saying, yeah. So we just put the mad mullet back on the trailer, and uh, James has popped down, and uh, I tell you what, this place is an absolute. 
pigsty. The previous people that were here, as you can see, there's just heaps and heaps of mud, leaves, fish, prawns all over the jetty. And uh, as you can see, even though James hasn't made the mess, he's cleaning up after people. So guys, if you're going to use these places, keep them bloody clean.